Welcome back. This is going to be our Algebra 2 Linear Functions Lesson Number 7, Systems of Linear Equations Homework Review Part 2. Uh, hope you guys caught Part 1 when we went over, I guess, basic types of system equations for um, a two a system of two equations with two variables. And so now we're kind of moving into three equations with two variables. Uh, if you find this video helpful, please give it a like, appreciate it and all, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Turn notifications to so know when new videos are added to the channel. So number three, show that x equals 10, y equals four, and z equals seven is a solution to the system below without solving the system, system formally. So what the question is asking for is just to do what's called a check. We're really seeing in this case that by plugging in the values we have of x equals 10, y equals 4, and z equals 7, whether, whether or not they will fulfill or balance out the equations. And so let's take a look at the first equation here. So we have x plus 2y plus z equals 25. So we'll replace x with 10 plus 2 times y is 4 plus z is 7, and will that equal to 25? So that's really the question here. And so we see here we get 10 plus 8 plus 7. And when we get this value here, we can get 10 plus 8 plus 7 does equal 25. So 25 equals 25. And that's checked. Now let's try the second equation. Second equation is 4x minus y minus 5z equals 1. And again, all we're doing is doing a check. We're trying to plug in those answers they gave us and see if they work out. If they do, then they are a solution to this system of equations. So 4 times 10 minus 4 minus 5 times 7. Will that equal to 1? Well, we have 40 minus 4 and minus 35. Well, 40 minus 4, that's equal to 36. And 36 minus 35, yes, that does equal to 1. So that works out fine. Now for the last question. So we have, so we checked for the first two. Now, you might say in this case, well, I got the first two correct. It must be true for all of them. Well, that's not true. You have to double check. You have to basically check for all the equations with all the, all the values. And we call this a check mostly because we're not solving anything. Everything's been solved for. We're just making sure everything is balanced. And so for the last equation, we have negative 2x minus y plus 8z equals 32. We're going to take negative 2, multiply by 10, minus y, which is 4, plus 8 times 7. Will that equal to 32? And so we have negative 2 times 10 is negative 20, minus 4, plus 8 times 7 is 56. And so here we have negative 20 minus 4 is negative 24, plus 56. And 56 minus 24 will equal to 32. So 32 will equal to 32, and it works out. So yes, this is a solution to the system of, of equations. We know because we did a check for all of them. Okay, so that's what question three is all asking about. Question four. In the following system, the value of the constant c is unknown. But it is known that x equals negate and y equals four. And the x, y values that solve, solve the system. Determine the value of c. Show how you arrived at your answer. Okay, so if x is equal to negative 8 and y equals 4 are solutions for all three equations. That means that when we put them into any of these, we should be able to figure out what the value of c is. And so it doesn't matter if we use the first equation or the second equation. So which equation should we use? Well, I'm going to go with the second one, be only because it's a little more basic meaning I don't have to worry about multiplying anything. And so now if I have x minus y plus z equals negative one, and I know x equals negative eight, and y is four plus z equals neg one, I can now solve for z. Now negative eight minus four, that's neg 12. 
So neg 12 plus z is equal to neg 1. And we add 12 to both sides. We get z is equal to 11. But the question is asking for the value of c. Well, at this point, since we know z should work out for all, all the equations, whether the first, second, or third, and it's the same for x and y, x is negative 8 and y is 4, since z equals 11, we can apply those values into the third equation, filling everything in and solving for the missing value of c. So we'll take 2 times x, which is negative 8, minus y, which is 4, plus c times z, which is 11, equals 35. That means negative 16 minus 4 plus 11c equals 35. We're going to combine these two numbers. You get negative 20 plus 11c equals 35. Adding 20 to both sides, we get 11c equals to 55. Now, that would mean if we divide both sides by 11, we get c equal to 5. So the strategy was to apply the values we know for x and y into either the first or second equation, solve for the variable of z, and then after that, we would then use all the values for x, y, and z to plug into the last equation to find the missing value of c. Question 5. Solve the following system of equations. Carefully show how you arrived at your answers. So now, this time around, we actually don't know anything about x, y, and z. And so we have to be super careful about how we approach this. We have three variables and three equations. But there's a plan. When solving systems of three equations, it would be best to use the cancellation method or elimination method. The first thing you're looking for is if one of the variables has the same or opposite value in all three equations. If so, then that is the one you want to cancel out. You would pair up two of the equations to cancel out the variable by either adding them together if the coefficients are opposite or subtracting them if their coefficients are equal. The result will be two equations with two variables. When we get this, we can use our rules to solve for the system of two equations just like we've been doing before. So let's now take a look at this. There seems to be a particular variable that, that seems to have either the same or opposite coefficients. It's not x because we see 4x, negative 1x, and 3x. It's not z but we have, because we have negative 1z, positive 2z, and 5z. We do notice that we have a positive 2y for the first equation, a negative 2y for the second equation, and a negative 2y for the third equation. So it looks like we're going to be looking to take away y from the, be the, let me the uh, y, let y be the first variable we eliminate. And so we're going to look for, in this case, the two equations which have opposite coefficients for y. And that will be the first two. So we're going to combine them. So we have 4x plus 2y minus 1z equals 21. And negative 1x minus 2y plus 2z equal to 13. We will then add downwards. This way, the positive y and negative y will cancel each other out. Well, 4x minus x gives us 3x. And negative 1z plus 2z gives us positive 1z. Adding 12, 21 plus 13 will give us 34. And that's one equation with two variables. Now, we need to use another pair of equations. And probably because we need to match up the third equation with one of these two. But it looks like in this case that since the third equation has a negative 2y, we'll match it up with the first equation. And so that's the other pair we're going to be looking for. So now we take 4x plus 2y my, oh, minus, make sure I copy that down correctly, 
minus 1z equals 21 and 3x minus 2y plus 5z equal to 70. And here we're going to combine. We have 7x. We see the negative 2y and positive 2y cancel each other out. And negative 1z plus 5z is going to be plus 4z is equal to 91. So now we have two equations. And we want to, we notice that none, the two x's, the x's, the coefficients of x's in the, in the two equations and the coefficients of c's in two equations are neither the same nor opposite. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to try to cancel out one of the two variables. And I notice that 1z makes things much easier for us. We can multiply the first equation, 3x plus 1z equals 34, by negative 4 so that I'll have a negative 4z in my new equation. So now we're going to take negative 4 and multiply 3x plus 1z. Then multiply on the other side 34 by negative 4. And we're going to get, in this case, distributing, we're going to get negative 12x minus 4z equal to, now, negative 4 times 34. That's negative 120 plus another neg 16. That's negative 136. We're now going to add downwards. And we'll see in this case, adding downwards, we get 4z and negative 4z cancel each other out. And we combine 7x minus 12x, we get negative 5x. And we combine 91 minus 136, I believe we can get negative 45. Well, now we divide both sides by negative 5. x is equal to 9. So we, so we in this case, found one of the equations. We've solved for one of the variables in this case, x equals 9. We're going to apply that into one of the two original equations we found. Probably we'll use 3x plus 1z equals 34. Because now, if we plug the x equals 9, 3 times 9 plus 1z equals 34, we'll get 27 plus 1z equals 34. Subtracting 27 from both sides, we get our z value is equal to 7. So now we have x and the value of z. <clears throat> Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to now solve for the value of y by plugging into one of the original equations. Any of them are fine, but I think we'll just start with the first one. Because the value of x and the value of y and value of c will be, all be the same value to be a solution for this system of equations. So, so 4x becomes 4 times 9 plus 2 times y minus 1 times 7 equal to 21. And so now we have 36 plus 2y minus 7 equal to 21. Combining the 36 and the negative 7, we get 29 plus 2y equals 21. Subtracting 29 from both sides, we get 2y is equal to negative 8. A little space here. And we divide both sides by 2. y equals negative 4. And so now that's a solution for x, y, and z. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope this was helpful to you. This is the end of part two of our video. Please make sure to give us a video a like if you found it helpful. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications, and we'll see you in part three. Take care and be safe.